Yes, then YouTube, we are back with another custom tactics video of a formation that I have not done on this FIFA, and that is, of course, the 352. Also, I am going to show some gameplay uh, towards the end of the video during this, so I can show you how you can use a 352. So please, YouTube, drop this video a like for me, drop a comment down below, and please hit that subscribe button to my channel. That would mean the world to me. So without any further ado, let's get into the custom tactic. For your cheapest and most reliable place to buy FC24 coins, check out mmoexp.com. Link is down in the description below. Use the code WOLF at the checkout for 5% off your order. Check out trustdice.wing. Link is down in the description below. Enjoy 8,000 plus crypto games, up to 20% cash back, fast withdrawal system, and a 24-7 live support. You do have popular games in the casino, and you also have a live casino if you do want to check it out. Link is down in the description below check them out. You can also use the sports section as well, whether it be the NBA, the Champions League, the Premier League, the Bundesliga, the NFL La Liga, anything you want. So remember to check out trustdice.win. Link is down in the description below. So you are definitely only going to want to use balanced on the defensive style in the 3-5-2. The 3-5-2 is absolutely amazing, but one area that it does struggle with is defensively. If you can get the def defensive side of the formation right, you will win way, way, way more games than you will lose and you will just have an absolute whale of a time. So that's why I'm using balanced on the defensive style. The defensive width, I do make it a little bit more narrow than I do normally, so I do go down from 50 to 45. Remember, defending in the 3-5-2, we need to get it spot on, so I don't really want to see many gaps with my left midfielder and my right midfielder when they're tucking in. I want my three centre-backs in general to be a little bit more narrow and a little bit more compact as well. Well, and just in general, making us harder to break down when our opponent is attacking us in on goal. The defensive depth, you do have two options, YouTube. Okay, so option one, like I've been saying in all my videos recently, is the 71 depth. That is the option that I use. If you, any of you don't know what 71 depth does, it does the automatic press and the automatic offside trap for you. So it's very, very, very OP and very, very broken. So it's definitely something that I feel like you should be using. But I know some of you don't really want to use that aggressive high line. And if you don't, defensive depth that I would recommend would be 55. So if you don't want the automatic press and the automatic offside trap and for your defensive line to be a little bit higher than they are normally, I would use 55. If you're like me though, and you do want to be quite aggressive and wait a little bit more aggressive than you would normally be, 71 depth is the way to go. The offense, yes, you guessed it, YouTube. Of course, it is going to be balanced and direct passing. I mean, it's not going to be anything else, really, is it? Like, let's be real. It really just is not going to be anything else other than balanced and direct passing. I don't really know what else I could say other than it, just use it, you know? Like, just use the balance and direct passing. You will know exactly what I'm talking about if you use it. The offensive width, I actually, a little bit boring. I just leave it on 50 in the 3-5-2. I really like where my left midfielder and my right midfielder are in general. I really like the fact that I've got a cam that is kind of just floating around and stuff like that. He's just in the area that I want him to be. That makes it easier for me to create opportunities. And just in general, I kind of don't really want to change the offensive width with it. I, I kind of just like where my whole team is, you know. I kind of just like it. So if I like it, I'm going to use it, right? Players in the box. Yes, you guessed it. Seven. No real method to the madness. The way I look at that is pretty obvious. The more players that we have in the box, the more likely we are to score a goal. That really is just the way that I look at it, YouTube. It's so, so, so simple and so, so, so effective. Is I can't believe that you wouldn't use more players in the box. I know some people like to use like a, a four and stuff like that. It just blows my mind. My spreadsheet and my data back it up. The more players that we have in the box, the more goals that we score. But at the same time, we don't want to go completely YOLO and have everyone in the box because we're not doing a YOLO custom tactics, right? Corners and free kicks, of course, are down from three and three to two and two. Stop us getting counter-attacked on from our own corners and free kicks. So that's the custom tactics done. Player instructions coming right up. So in the 3-5-2, you are going to want to use one of your fullbacks, in my opinion, as one of the left midfielder or the right midfielder. So I have chosen to have Ferland Mendy as my left midfielder rather than Hakimi being my right midfielder. And then the other one, you're just going to want to slot them in at centre back very nicely. So that's what I've done. So Ferland Mendy is my left back, my, my left back there, but then he's the left mid in game because you will see what I do with the player instructions as well, why that is needed. So to kick things off, both of my strikers are on stay central and getting behind. Yes, so stay central 
and getting behind. I like to call them your absolute bread and butter. I like it when my striker is playing within the width of the 18-yard box. I really, really, really like it. I find it really, really, really effective. And I just, I don't really find it worthy having the striker not on State Central. The getting behind, of course, especially when we're playing a formation like the 3-5-2. When we have a cam there in that number 10 area, which is my Moose of the RB. Even if we don't play the ball to our strikers as they're making the run in behind, think of then the gap that that does create for a number 10 to operate in. So it's very, very, very important and something that I feel like is such an underrated aspect of the two strikers. That then actually brings us nicely onto the cam. In my opinion, probably the most important player in the 3-5-2 is your cam. That player, for me, is on comeback on defence and get into the box for cross. Because I have him on comeback on defence, he will kind of tuck into either the left side or the right side of your midfield three. But then as soon as we get the ball, he will push straight up in there into that cam position. And again, just making it a lot easier to kind of like transition in from a, a more defensive structure when we haven't got the ball. But then as soon as we get the ball, we go into our attacking structure. The get into the box for cross, kind of like with the players in the box. Very simple, really. The more players that we have in the box, the more likely we are to score a goal. It really just is that simple the left midfielder and the right midfielder now this is the most important part of the 3-5-2 youtube so both of them are on exactly the same so come back on the fence i want them tucking in when we don't have the ball to basically be playing as like a left wing back and a right wing back stay wide get in behind and get into the box across and to show you as well my right midfielder come back on the fence stay wide get in behind and get into the box for cross. So the comeback on the fence, pretty self-explanatory. When we don't have the ball, they will tuck nicely in next to our left-sided centre-back and our right-sided centre-back to basically defend in a five and a back. The stay wide, pretty simple. I want my left midfielder and my right midfielder to hold the width. Kind of for an offensive move, but this actually makes us more defensively solid as well. The getting behind and getting to the box for cross is pretty self-explanatory. Making runs in behind. And like I said with the players in the box earlier, the more players that we have in the box, the more likely we are to score a goal. Now, both of the CDMs, I have them on cover centre. So that's the first thing I do. Both of them are on cover centre. The more defensive-minded CDM, so for me on my RTG at the moment, that is informed Jude Bellingham. He is on stay back while attacking and cover centre. The more attack-minded CDM that you've got, so for me on my road to glory, my Musiala, I leave him on balanced attack and cover centre. So he will get forward a little bit, but he won't be completely YOLOing it up the pitch either. He'll kind of be getting forward a little bit to support the cam really, rather than the two strikers. In my opinion, it's needed and it gives us more offensive options when we don't, when we have got the ball, sorry, and we're attacking. And then when we don't have the ball, it will just tuck nicely into that CDM position anyway. So it's a bit of a no-brainer. All three of the centre-backs are on stay-back while attacking. So all three of them are on stay-back while attacking. It's pretty obvious. My goalkeeper, last but not least, YouTube, is on comes for crosses and sweeper keeper. So this is kind of like the offensive structure in the 3-5-2. You see you got the CDM there with the cam dropping in deep. And because I've got my left midfielder and my right midfielder on stay wide, they will be staying wide. And you see there, my Musiala is breaking forward a little bit because of what he's on in terms of the balanced attack with the left CDM. So it's very, very, very important. And then you see there, because my cam, Moose at the RB, is on comeback on defence, he is actually helping out as well in the defensive third. And you see there, my Furlan Mendy, as I do do a little bit of bad defending, because he is also on comeback on defence, he is also tucking into that left wing back role of the three at the back. And that right there is a brilliant, brilliant bit of show of faith about what the getting behind can do on the two strikers as my Dan Juma does just miss an absolute sitter. But that right there is exactly why you need both your strikers on getting behind. It just is so, so, so OP and effective. And you see there my Furlan Mendy also again tucking into that left wing back and that right wing back role absolutely brilliantly. And then as soon as we get the ball, look, he's gone. So you see there as my Drew Bellingham puts up the ball, he's gone. My left mid is absolutely on his bike. So it's very, very, very effective. Beautiful ball. And you see there my left midfielder being on getting behind, of course. Oh, good save. But you see there, you see the Makolo Moani, my right midfielder, tucking in there nicely to that right wing back position. But then as soon as we get the ball, look, he's gone. He's gone down this byline. Look, so, so, so effective. So, so, so OP. As Suke makes it. 1-0. And that right there is why you need your strikers on stay central and your right midfielder to be on comeback on defence. He tucks in nicely into that right wing back perfectly. But then as soon as we get the ball, he wants to drive forward straight away because he's on getting behind and getting to the box for cross as well. 
And there again is my Musiala, my midfielder that is on balanced attack. Just getting forward ever so slightly. As you can see here, my right midfielder being on get wide and getting behind. Making them runs in behind. Driving to the byline again. And you see them. I know I lost the ball. But did you see Musiala coming in at that back stick there? So, so, so important. Because then I've got the one CDM, which is then Jude Bellingham. He is then on stay back wide attacking. And he doesn't move from that CDM position. But when we get the ball, my Musiala will venture forward ever so slightly. But not too YOLO, you know. And again, my left midfielder pulling him right there to that left wing back role because he's on comeback on defence. But then when we get the ball, look, he's straight up there. Musiala is a little bit further forward than Jude Bellingham. And you see that. That right there is because of him being on balanced attack rather than stay back while attacking. Colin Moani, beautiful. And this is what I love about the 3 5 2. Um, okay, so Fernand Mendy did just miss the sitter, but that's why you have the left midfielder and the right midfielder on getting to the box for cross right there. So you see I got the ball, and I was running down the byline with my right midfielder. My left midfielder was there perfectly on the flip side of the pitch. So again, that's why you have him on getting to the box for cross with your left midfielder and your right midfielder. Beautiful ball. Suke. Beautiful finish. And that right there is exactly why you have your strikers on stay central and getting behind. They can make beautiful, beautiful runs into the pitch there. They score a beautiful goal as well. In my brand new 3-5-2 custom tactics video for you guys. If you did enjoy this video, please drop it a like for me. Drop a comment down below. And if you can hit that subscribe button to my channel, that would mean the world to me. Thank you for watching. Remember, spread the love and positivity. PMA, positive mental attitude. Peace out. One love.